Hello everyone, welcome back to Upside Down Data. Today I want to talk about four different metrics and what they have to say about the short-term outlook of Bitcoin. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on Twitter where we put out regular updates about our risk indicators and more. So I want to talk about several different indicators that I think can give us a picture of what we might be able to expect in kind of the shorter term uh, going forward for Bitcoin. And I want to start with the trend confidence indicator. This is a machine learning based indicator we have here at the channel. It's basically designed to tell us how confident we should feel about whatever the given trend is that Bitcoin is in. So for example, if Bitcoin is in an uptrend, what you'd like to see is for the TCI to be green. Basically, if you're in up uptrend and the TCI is green above zero, that's good. That means you can have some faith in that uptrend continuing. But if you're in an uptrend and the TCI is red, like what happened back here in the spring of 21, that's bearish. That's not what you want to see. That tends to pre uh, precede reversals back to the downside. You can see how much of a leading indicator the TCI was before this huge crash. But then likewise, if you're in a downtrend and the TCI flips green, like what happened back in the summer of 21, that's bullish. That tends to suggest a reversal out of that downtrend is likely. And indeed, that's what we ended up seeing coming out of the summer. Again, acting is very much a leading indicator coming out of that. So if you look at where we stand right now, we are in the green zone. In fact, we've actually been green ever since early February. So even through the capitulation that happened on the day that Russia invaded Ukraine, this has remained green this whole time. It's remained bullish this whole time. So we're coming back down and we can actually probe this model to ask it what specific price level it's watching as being that critical level around 42k is what it's watching right now and we can see we are coming back down towards that you know trading right now as i'm recording this in the 43k range and so it, that's what i'm going to be watching on this indicator can we hold above this level specifically can we keep our closes above this level if we can that's generally bullish and more upside can follow if we start closing in the red then in recent history every single time we've closed in the red more downside has followed from then and so i would see closing in the red as being a relatively bearish sign in the more short term that at least some more short term downside would be quite likely should we close below this level should we lose this 42k level or round about that level so it's something i'm going to be i'm going to be watching but if we can kind of keep above it and especially if we can just uh continue to close above this level i think the bullish kind of bias will hold from this model's perspective so let's talk about a different model that we have here on the channel. Let's talk about the upside downside potential indicator, another machine learning based model that we have that assesses risk. And this model can assess risk across different time frames. So I'm going to show you the short term just because this is more, you know, a short term oriented video, the short term UDPI. And you can just see this is the, the price action of Bitcoin across time color coded to the UDPI level. Um, but obviously we care more about what's going on more recently here. What you can see is that we're in kind of this orangish-ish level right here. You know, we had dipped down into the green at that actual bottom back in January. And then we've been kind of hanging out in these general ranges because we've been more or less range bound. You know, uh, in the short term, Bitcoin hasn't been doing anything especially exciting this time. So we've been kind of hanging out in this range. And we can see that when we just zoom in more closely on the uh, actual raw output. So that's what this is just across time on the short term time frame. This is moves that play over days to weeks that this cares about so much a lot shorter term in its focus than our long term UDPI. And we can see we've been just kind of largely bouncing around um, more or less kind of between at the bottom negative two and a little bit above one now where we stand right now, but nothing really too crazy. And so what this kind of suggests to me is that, you know, we, we've gotten a little bit extended here coming up to about one. We can see that. And in the past, when we get up into these orange levels, you know, oftentimes that's a point where we can get small corrections, even in kind of uptrends, although occasionally you can just continue to blow past them if you're going into a parabolic rally. But I think more likely than not from the perspective of this model, kind of sideways consolidation is probably the most expected thing from just what we're seeing right now, right? And if we combine this with what we're seeing from the TCI, I think this also makes sense where, you know, if we're able to kind of hold this level, but just kind of bounce around in this region, that would be totally consistent with what the UDPI would expect. Risk could cool off if we're to just continue kind of hanging out in the same general range. And then once we're moving back into these lower levels on the UD, on the short-term UDPI, that tends to be able to uh, set us up for bigger moves to the upside. So I think consolidation at these levels is very plausible. 
Now, of course, I should caveat all of this by saying that any kind of short-term prediction are obviously very questionable in the sense that it's hard to really make definitive predictions for the short term. But in trying to do that in this video, that's what I'm seeing as being the most likely of all the different possible outcomes. It's kind of just continuing in this kind of current range for a while, let risk cool off a bit. And then if we can hold a bullish bias on the TCI, some more moves back to the upside are plausible. But why am I thinking that upside might be more plausible than downside? Well, there are actually a couple other metrics that I want to show to talk about that I think are also kind of leaning more towards the upside being plausible here than the downside. So I'm going to flip over first here to this point of maximum pain. So I'm on um, coinoptionstrack.com. That's what this is coming from. And this is a really great met metric for Bitcoin. That basically, I've talked about this this metric before, but essentially it's quantifying the price at which the people who are writing options and puts or call and put options will be in maximum profit. So, it's, you know, the way that options work, they have someone who basically writes the option or issues the option and then the people who buy. The people who buy options pay a premium for having done so. And that's what the people who are writing the options are basically profiting from. So if you're writing a call option, you do not want the price to go up and reach that strike price because then the people will be in, in the money you'll have to pay out and if you're writing a put you don't want the price to go down to that strike price because then you're going to have to pay out as well so you want to kind of keep the price between wherever you're writing your calls and wherever you're writing your puts obviously this will be many different market players who are doing this but in aggregate there the people who are writing these calls and put options they are all motivated to keep price below some level and above some level. And so that's what this point of maximum pain is. This is where the people who are buying the put and call options will be in the least amount of profit and where the people writing them will be in the maximum amount of profit. And the idea is that the people who write these call and put options tend to be big players. They're kind of the, the money make, or market maker type of uh, market players. So they tend to have a lot of capital to throw around. They can move markets in the correct conditions to keep themselves in maximum profit. The idea being if there's not a lot of other forces driving the markets, they can nudge it in the direction that they want it to go to try to get to this point of maximum pain for the buyers of those calls and puts. And you'll notice when you just watch this metric over time, so right now for tomorrow, that point of maximum pain is around 45K, the price does tend to kind of hang out near this, this price quite often. Though obviously there will be things that happen, you know, surges of demand or big capitulations that will make this meaningless. But kind of all else being equal, oftentimes price does tend to gravitate a little bit towards this level, just because you have a lot of market participants who are motivated to keep price at that level. And we can see just over the next couple of days, this kind of general range is what seems to be quite likely. And you can zoom out a little bit more, you know, uh, over the next week, still around the 45K range. And obviously these will update, you know, as more thing, as more calls and puts get you know, written and traded, etc. This will um, this will be dynamic, so it's not to say this is the permanent level that it'll be at these different dates. But you can just get a sense of where it is. And I, I just generally tend to use this as more short-term, just kind of gravity well. That kind of all else being equal, you might expect, expect price to hang out in that general region. And so I think this is, again, confluent with what we were seeing from the TCI and the EDPI. That from the TCI's perspective, it's still bullish. And should we kind of reclaim... 44, 45K range, we'd stay in that bullish positioning. And from the short-term UDPI perspective, we were a little bit overextended where we had been up in the higher 40K ranges. So this pullback into the lower 40Ks is very reasonable. And if we can kind of hang out here, kind of flip these levels into support, then in the process of doing so, risk might be able to cool off, which could set up room to the upside. And the other thing that we can note also, which might suggest that upside is, is plausible here, is that we haven't gotten too overextended on market sentiment, at least as being tracked by the fear and greed index. So this is basically an index that's trying to capture how greedy market participants are. Are they overly bullish, overly greedy, or are they overly fearful? And, and basically the idea is that um, greed tends to kind of go along with upside, and then fear tends to go along with downside, but then also tends to mark those bottoms. You know, extreme fear oftentimes happens at these kind of bottoming out points before it moves back to the upside. Although it is possible to hang out in fear for a while or to hang out in greed for a while. It's not always marking the top or bottom. But if you're in an uptrend, which we are in right now, ever since January, you know, we've been in higher highs and higher lows um, throughout, then the idea is that for that to be kind of sustainable, you want market sentiment to be in kind of disbelief for as long as possible. 
And there are a couple of reasons why you want this to happen. One of the big reasons is the derivatives market. So the derivatives markets can have an outsized impact on the price of Bitcoin in these kind of low liquidity market uh, conditions or low volume kind of conditions like we're in right now. We're not in a raging bull market where derivatives, uh, basically spot demand can end up kind of out outweighing derivative action. And the idea is that if people are just going crazy on the long side in derivatives, that they're betting like crazy, the price will go up, you know, using crazy high um, leverage in their, those bets, then what ends up happening is, is that if the price goes against those traders by too much, they'll get liquidated, that creates a bunch of sell pressure, price will dump. That's actually what we saw multiple times through here, these big leverage liquidation events that really drove price down, um, both coming off of this top and then also coming down here as well. And so if you're in an uptrend, you don't really want those kind of degenerate longs to come in, you know, those people who are just going in 100x leverage to on the long side and just kind of yoling in to the market. Because they're just easy pickings to get liquidated. If the price goes against them a little bit, they'll get liquidated. That creates a bunch of artificial sell pressure, which will tank the price down and kind of just stops the uptrend in its tracks. What you want is actually people to be going in on the short side, people to be betting against the uptrend. Because what will happen is then if the price goes up against them, moves to the upside, they'll get liquidated, which actually, which actually creates a lot of buying pressure. And that's actually what we saw coming out of the summer. This was a short squeeze where a bunch of people went in heavily on the short size throughout here. And they remained shorting kind of as we rose up. And they all just kind of progressively got liquidated until we had that, you know, nice, really big rally out to the upside. So that's what we'd like to see continuing. And one of the things that can allow for that to happen is for sentiment to remain really bearish. Because when sentiment's really bearish, those are conditions where people are, are more likely to be entering in on the short side than the long side. Or at the very least, you're not probably going to get the, the vast majority of people dumping into the long side. It's really in these greedy conditions that people go in crazy on the long side that can then set up for these kind of unstable market conditions that can lead to these big crashes. So the fact that we've moved back down to 34, back down into the fear zone at this kind of higher level, you know, at 43K is a good sign because we have been getting up into the neutral zone. So the longer that we can kind of maintain this fearful sentiment in the market, the longer we can have that while slowly moving up, the better. Because once then we actually make a dis dis uh, decisive breakout to the upside, then there can be things like short liquidations that happen to help catalyze that move up, break us through levels of resistance that then might lead more FOMO demand to come in, which then can lead into these bigger rallies that we end up seeing. So that's something that I'm seeing as hopeful right now. I'd be a lot more concerned if we'd gotten up into greedy territory in this move up and this break above these resistance levels, because then that could have meant that the derivatives markets could turn against us or that we just get a lot of people who want to kind of um, front run the top. They see too many people being greedy, so they're starting to sell now and that can lead to moves to the downside. So the longer we can stay in fear, the better is my opinion. So in the short term, I see that as a good thing that we're remaining more fearful and we haven't flipped greedy quite yet. So just to reiterate what, what I mentioned before, obviously all of this is very speculative. Anything short term is very questionable. You cannot make definitive calls in the short term. Anyone who says that they know exactly what's gonna happen in the short term is frankly just uh, full of it, I, in my opinion. No one can know, no one has you know magical insight into the future that can know exactly what's gonna happen in the next week, for example. But that being said, I do think that these models give us at least guides of what we should expect or what we might expect or what how we can weight the different possibilities. How can we weight a big move to the upside versus a big move to the downside versus consolidation? And what I'm seeing across these metrics, in my opinion, is that consolidation seems like the most likely path forward for a while. Don't be surprised if we see Bitcoin just kind of ranging in the, the 40Ks, kind of the low to mid to even upper. You know, what, what could be actually, in my opinion, a frankly pretty bullish development is if we just kind of take this range that we were in down here and just kind of shift it up a bit and then hang it out in a range up here for a while before we can shift back up. Because again, in these really kind of bearish macro conditions with inflation and everything else that's going on, as we hit a new level of resistance, there's going to be a bunch of people who are just looking for the exit. That's just going to happen. And I think what is going to be the case is that if we go too crazy too fast, there's just going to be, we're going to be hitting too many of these resistance levels too fast. Everyone's going to be dumping into sell. That's not a good thing. If we can just slowly start charting a course to the upside, allow demand to come in to buy in the, buy up the selling that'll happen at every, every single new level of resistance that we hit, 
that could be a more sustainable move than if we just went parabolic from here and we have all of these different market market participants just looking for the exit as we kind of blow up up to the upside so you know we're gonna have to wait and see what happens but that's my um current outlook in the short term in my opinion i think that consolidation here is probably the most likely outcome but obviously i won't be shocked if we have a move one way or the other and i'll be watching things like the tci the edpi and these other metrics to give guides as that new data or as those new moves develop all right if you like the content remember to subscribe to the channel give the video a like and follow us on twitter where we put out regular updates better risk indicators and more